Welcome, friends, to another episode of That Whiskey Show. I am Chris, and this gorgeous lady is my wife, Joan. Hello. Tonight, we are bringing you a new whiskey for both of us. You haven't had this I yet, have, have you? I have not had this yet. Okay, this is going to be Two Bar Spirits Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, I believe this is pretty young whiskey, right? You're going to kind yes. of go into all of that good stuff so we're always excited to try new stuff and, and this one i like the presentation of the bottle alone once again good marketing goes a long way with me so uh i am going to turn it over to my wife so she can kind of tell you the stuff she knows about this bourbon all right so two bars is uh, actually a ranch out uh out of seattle washington that's uh, been in the same family for five generations. This last generation started um, a distillery kind of loosely based on the fact that there might have been a little moonshining in their family past as well. So that's, that's kind of down low part of their tradition, supposedly. So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, if they're moonshiners, you know it's probably got to be good. Right? No. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. All right. Uh-uh. So that yeah, this is the Kaiser family. Uh, the uh, master distiller is Nathan Kaiser on this. Okay. He is a former tech startup guy. Quit all that to go back home, do the family thing, and uh, start a distillery. Conceived of it in 2010. Um, up and running by 2012. So definitely not a lot of history on the distilling side, mm -hmm. but I mean this color really nice. Yeah, really really nice. It's got good legs to it, mm -hmm. and it does have a nice nose. You can tell it's young. Um, so this is straight whiskey. Um, they do state on the back that it is no younger than two years, which is literally the minimum right. standard. Right. However, that could mean that there are older whiskeys in the bottle as well. Um, straight whiskey has to state if it is under four years old. If the youngest whiskey in the bottle is under four years old, it has to state that on the, on the label. Mm. So, I definitely get be. a nice note of cherry in there on the nose. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty mm -hmm. rich. Yeah. So, story on this, I couldn't find anything official on the mash bill. Uh, the closest thing I could find was uh, just a little blurb from Bourbon and Banter, um, which said that it is 90%, or I'm sorry, um, Seattle corn, all Seattle corn, um, four, types, four different types of malted barley, um, and winter wheat, some of that could be uh, from Oregon. So it's 90%, and they state this on their website, that it is 90% minimum grain that comes from Washington State. Gotcha. And the other 10% uh, is going to come from Oregon. Up to 10% from Oregon. So, I like that my wife finally picked something that wasn't like 100% rye. So maybe I won't completely be drenched in sweat after <laughs> taking a couple sips of this one. Yeah, there's, there's no know, rye in this. We'll at, see, though. Theoretically, no rye in this at all. Um, right. But like I said, I could only find one site, and they did not state where they got their... Gotcha. Um, there's now, granted, it is like 118 degrees in Nebraska today. It is really so, hot uh, right now, yeah. But That's, I like that it's not rye. It's nice. It does have a really nice nose. Yeah, and being that it's bourbon, can't have any E130 added to it. Mm -hmm. uh, no, nothing except for water. What, what's the proof on this? 100. 100 proof? Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, just from the nose, you would never guess that that's 100 proof. I, I get a little. I get a, enough ethanol in there. Are you? I really. I'm not upset about it. There's the proof. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the proof. Sweet. That's a lot of fire. Mm-hmm. Um, 
they do age this in half barrels, so I do I do taste that barrel, that half barrel uh, on there. Yeah. I get more oak than than I'd think that I'd get on a two year old. But like I said, um, it, that just means the youngest juice in here is two. <laughs> it, it's a little warm. It's a little warm. That that really does have quite the the burn for a hundred proof. I mean, I'm kind of. I mean, to me, that almost has like the burn of an old Forester to it. Um, it's young. It's young. Um. Nice mouthfeel to it. So they, it does seem like they, they went out of their way to keep it local, um, to be really transparent about their process and be very honest about where they're sourcing everything from. Um, and I have to applaud that on for them. Um, mm -hmm. Being that they labeled it straight, they had to put an age statement on it. Right. Um, but any little bit of information that any distillery puts out, uh, I appreciate that. I applaud that. I wish they put their mash bill out. I wish their bourbon tasted a little better. <laughs> um, okay, that's, hey, look, yeah. Look, we, hey, All right. look, we've always been very forthright and straight on this show. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't think it tastes bad. It's just strong. I'm not a fan. Uh, I think that for me, there is way too much burn and not enough reward in the palate and the flavor for me. Um, I think that the folks that really love like uh, Garrison Brothers would love this. I, this okay. is uh, to me, this is better than Garrison Brothers. Uh, just because there's there's more going on than just oak and fire. There is oak and fire. A lot of it. Uh, but yeah. there is that nice nice cherry kind of thing happening. There is. I mean, I guess... It is butterscotchy. I guess you are getting more of the dessert end mm -hmm. of bourbon. But it's just... I think the sweet plays well with the heat. Um, I don't and think I get there's a lot enough. of cherry on the finish, too. I don't think there's enough mix for me. I think it's just, for me, I'm just getting too much burn. It needs more time in the barrel. I, I think it just needs more time in the barrel. Maybe more wheat. A little more wheat yeah, might help just, to, to calm that did down. Did you hit mine with water, too? I haven't hit either one okay. yet. Let's get a... I want to see if a little bit of water maybe changes put a decent the attitude of it here okay. for a second. Um, I'm not trying to say that it, it's bad. That's that's not. I do. I don't want to put that across. I'm just saying for my personal preference and taste that I would prefer it to be a little bit smoother than it is because I don't feel that I'm getting enough of that sweet dessert. To warrant the burn it's that not it gives, quite rich enough to carry the the ethanol. Yes, which usually yes. is exactly the opposite. Doesn't have enough ethanol to carry the flavor. Right. This one, I, I feel the burn is, is too much. The, one of the first times I'm going to say this, maybe they would have been okay to. I don't know. see. I I don't know. I <laughs> she still didn't say I it. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this is the first time I'm going to say it, but I'm not actually going to say oh, it. Okay, let me, let me see what it tastes like with water. <laughs> Brings out a little bit more kind of orange, oranginess, a little little bit of kind of orange peel. You do with the water did bring creamy. out some. It, it, bring, it brought out, out some, some citrus notes in the in the nose. Too. It did bring out more citrus. And I guess the other thing, too, is that with the nose is confusing to me because the nose was very cherry and and nice. You got your vanilla, your caramel, your cherry in there, and now you're getting the nice citrus note with the mm -hmm. water. But so I think the burn was surprising to me because it wasn't there on the nose as much as it was after you drink it. Well, I think that's also, you're comparing it to what we usually drink, and, and that rye that we had last time, 100 proof, 100% Monongahela rye. I said it again, Monongahela. Um, 
<laughs> on that word. Um, I'm going to say that the, the Tattersall Rye was a, I think, in my opinion, a better crafted spirit while going for the same thing, intensely local um, and old school and like crafty craft. Yeah. The execution, um, you know, I don't know. I would say it needs more time in the barrel, but there's plenty of oak on this. It's possible they maybe they put it in there like really strong at the at the upper end. They they might have put it right in at at uh, like one twenty five proof. Right. Yeah, I just. But the I nose would, is really nice. It is, but I would I would be a liar if I said that this is a bourbon that I would ask for again. Uh, I will obviously finish my pour because there is a special place in hell for people who do not finish their whiskey. <laughs> but I, w I don't think I, I'll come back to this. I'm not, I'm not a fan. I would like to make cocktails with this. I would not be afraid to make cocktails with this um, because obviously it works well with sweetness because sweetness is kind of the main flavor points in here. There's just not enough of... There's just not enough flavor. I want more flavor for the proof. So I, I and think, for the oak. Yeah. So I agree with what you're saying that maybe because my wife makes a mean cocktail. I think if you made me a mixed drink with this, that is how we would finish this bottle. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> so, but I don't think I'm going to come back to it just on the meat side. Uh, yeah. Sorry, two bars. You're just not doing it for me. Um, um, it's not the best, but I they're a young distillery. They've really only been putting out product for eight years. Yeah, I'm not saying that I want to pour it down the sink and run and, like, brush my teeth. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's not necessarily for me. What, the, what they have put into this bottle is not, for me, neat. I will like to try it in a cocktail and then see where I, it goes. I want to see what this does uh, barreled in a regular size barrel, put in at just a slightly lower proof, mm. maybe. I mean, not that I know anything about what proof it was put in at, but I, right. I'm i feeling like it's probably at the highest end. Right. Because it's, it's a little, little rough around the edges. Yeah. But as always... I don't hate it. No, I, I don't either. Uh, but I do... Yeah, I, I feel I have said my piece on it. <laughs> so, If you want something oaky and hot, um, if you can't afford Cowboy from Garrison Brothers. What, what, yeah, what, what is this rum? 40 bucks. So it's... <laughs> I'm sorry, you can get a bottle of Sexton for 25 um, Different experience altogether. Yeah. So if you want, if you want a cheaper. cowboy, rustic, punch you in the face with proof and oak thing, if you really love the Garrison Brothers cowboy but can't find it or can't afford it, I think you'd like this one a lot. Fair. As I said... I it, will it is finish a little it. thin. It is. It's a little thin. Um, I want more flavor F for the color on that, and what the what the nose is, and it's got a beautiful finish. I like the finish quite a bit. <sighs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'm gonna do um, an old fashioned in a Manhattan with that. Maybe um, maybe we'll let you know how that is. <laughs> And until next time, when I will report if my wife made me a cocktail out of this and uh, a Manhattan, whatever. Um, as always, we truly appreciate you coming and checking out that whiskey show. We hope you're enjoying these reviews. We really do just enjoy doing them. It's mm -hmm. time for us to spend time together and uh, get to try new things, whether we love them or not. <laughs> um, so please stop back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be drinking a whiskey that I enjoy. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking us out. <laughs>